Hello and welcome to Terry's Tesla or Terry's Tesla Garage in this case. Today we're going to be taking a look at the differences between the mobile charger that comes with your Tesla and the high powered wall connector I have behind me. A lot of people are asking questions. What should they tell their electrician to install before they get their Tesla? So forth and so on. So let's get to it. All right, I'm going to cut to it and just answer the biggest question right off the bat. Can you just get by with your mobile charger that came with your car? The answer is absolutely yes. You do not need to buy the high power wall connector. It, you, most, most Tesla drivers on the road today have used their mobile connectors since day one and they are totally happy with it and it does the job day in and day out. But that doesn't mean you won't want one of these. So let me cover the mobile connector first. We'll talk about the differences between the two, prices, what comes with it today, in 2020, so forth and so on. So let's start with the mobile connector. All right, your Tesla Model 3, Model Y, Model S, Model X, whichever Tesla you got came with this kit. Mine was in the trunk on delivery day. It's either in the trunk or the front, and more than likely your delivery speci specialist showed you where it was and told you about it. So I've taken it out of the car. It's literally just a bag. It's got some Velcro on the back to kind of keep it from moving around in the trunk, but that's it. It's just a case. So now let's go ahead and open it up. And once I get it open here, we'll talk about what's inside. There are three things inside in 2020. There used to be four, but now there are three. So first thing is you'll notice that there is an adapter. There's one adapter now, and it's called a NEMA 515. That's the technical name, but if you look at it, it's just a standard 120 volt type plug. So the same plug all over your house, all over your garage. The plugs you already have will work with your mobile charger. Now, the downside of using this that came with your car is that you're only gonna get anywhere from two to four, maybe five miles of range per hour. So think about it, if you charge for 10 hours, at best you can hope for 40 or 50 miles of range. And that's a long time to charge to get so little, but out of the car without doing anything else, just plugging this into a wall, you're gonna, you're gonna be able to use and charge your car. All right, so this comes with the car, it plugs into this cable we're gonna see in just a minute and you don't need anything else if that's all you need as far as speed is concerned. Now the next confusing thing for people is they see this adapter and you're like, what's this? This is the J1772 adapter and this has nothing to do with this kit, <laughs> zero. This is for public charging. So if you're using a non-Tesla charger, a charge point, a Volta, if you're using any of those public chargers out there, you would plug the public charger in this side so that you would take the nozzle off, plug it in here, and this is what goes in your Tesla. So where do I keep this? I keep it actually in the car, so it's convenient for me to get to. I keep it in the center console. This has nothing to do with this charging kit. They just keep it in there because it's just easier to keep it in there. So I'm gonna, I take this out immediately and put it inside the car. So we're gonna just put this aside because it has nothing to do with the mobile charger. All right, last but not least, you've got the mobile charger, which is a 20 foot cable. And on one end, it's got your Tesla connector that goes inside, you know, plugs into the side of your car. And on the other end is the actual mobile charger itself. That's this piece. So the mobile charger on one end has that opening for that adapter we showed earlier. So you would plug that adapter in and that would get you the ability to charge your car immediately with this adapter at four to five miles, or actually two to four miles an hour is the rated range. You might get five, but on a Model X, you're gonna get two miles, on Model 3, Model S, and Model Y potentially, you're gonna get three to four miles of range an hour, and that's it. So, that's it, all right. Now the big question, what should you get? And this is what we're really addressing in the video today. For an extra $35 on Tesla's website, you can get the NEMA 1450 adapter. So it looks very similar to the 515. They're both adapters that work with a mobile charger, 
but as you can see, the plugs are quite different. This is more like the dryer plug that's in your house if you have an electric dryer. And this is, again, the plug for everything else. So we're, gonna, we're, we're not even gonna use this anymore. We're just gonna put this aside. <clears throat> Once you order one of these, 35 bucks on Tesla's site, you're gonna have your electrician install a NEMA 1450 plug near your car. So mine is uh, right below my panel, so that made it easy, it made it an easy, low-cost low install. But what you're going to need, this is what you're going to tell your uh, electrician. You need a NEMA 1450, and you want a 50-amp circuit. So a 50-amp breaker for your NEMA 1450 plug. All right, we're going to go ahead and connect it all up show you how it works, and then see what we get in terms of speed. All right, the NEMA 1450 is installed. I got a green light on my mobile charger, which is letting my mobile connector, which is letting me know I've got power, all's good. And now I've got this 20 foot cable going all the way as far as it can go <laughs> to one of our Model 3s. So here's what happens. You obviously don't leave this laying on the ground like I did, but you pick up your mobile connector and there's a, it doesn't even look like it's a button, but there's a button right here. You're going to press it and that will open the door to your charge port and then you plug it in. That's it. So it'll take a second to negotiate and then your charger will start, your charge port will start blinking green, letting you know that you're getting a charge. So 30 miles of range per hour is what you get maximum because that's all the car can handle with your mobile connector with a model 3 a model y i'll put the specs up on the screen of what you actually get but that's pretty much it all right well if the mobile connector does everything you need it comes with your car you just need the 35 dollars adapter plus your electrician then why would you ever want the high-powered wall connector? The question of the day. So let's go over the advantages of the other one. As you can see, I started with the uh, NEMA 1450 because I thought, hey, that's all I need. That will do me just fine. And it is all I need, but I want it more. So I bought my first high-powered wall connector probably about a month or two after I got my Tesla because I was just drawn to the look at it of it. Not so much the cables all wrapped around it, but just that permanent feel of a charger installed in my garage that kind of even reminded me to a futuristic fuel pump. So that's one, the, one of the main reasons people go with a wall connector is for that permanent install aesthetic look. In other words, you like the look of it. Now, I have two. The first one I paid for, the second one was actually a referral gift. So thanks for all the people that were on the old referral program that bought Teslas with my referral code. I got that as a referral gift. But it paid my hard-earned money for the first one, no matter what. So what's the advantage besides the look? Second advantage is the speed. So if you don't care if 30 miles of range an hour is enough per night, then you're fine. But if you want faster charging, the wall connector can charge faster than the mobile connector. I'll put the stats down at the bottom. But for example, on my Model 3, where I might get 30 to 31 miles of range with the mobile connector, I get 46 miles of range with the um, wall connector. Not a huge difference. But for those that like to drive, come home, charge, go back out and drive immediately, then it can make all the difference in the world. If you do real estate, if you do any kind of business where you're going back and forth to your house and you're constantly running errands and you need that charge to be faster, then the mobile connector um, may not be fast enough and the wall connector may be giving you just that bit of an edge of about 15 to 16 miles of range more per hour. All right, last but not least, these are version two of the, or generation two of the wall connectors. They are now selling generation three, and generation three has Wi-Fi built in. So if you bought one today, it would be a slightly shorter cord, but it would also have um, 
It would have Wi-Fi built in, and the Wi-Fi doesn't really do a lot for people today, but you can expect uh, Tesla to add more capabilities with the Wi-Fi connected wall connectors. So that's it. I'm gonna plug one of these in so you can see the charge difference in speed, and we'll take it from there. So one thing you'll notice right off the bat is all the way from the wall connector, I'm at my worst case scenario, the cable is long enough to not just be dangling in the air because it is longer than the one that comes with the mobile connector. But the same thing happens. I have the uh, charger in my hand, I press the button, the door opens, and I plug in. So just like that, now it will start charging and we'll see what the charge speed goes up to. Now I'm getting about 46 miles of range per hour with the mobile connector. And again, that's awesome to be able to uh, get that faster charge. Now, as far as what you would tell your electrician to do, when we go back over to the panel, we used a 50 amp circuit on the uh, NEMA 1450. For the Tesla wall connectors, you're gonna to wanna to have your electrician install a 60 amp circuit. So 60 amps for the Tesla wall connector, and that will give you the maximum speed that your Tesla can handle uh, for newer Teslas. All right, that's it. So in terms of uh, the differences, you can totally get by with your mobile connector, as I said from the very beginning. If you like the aesthetics and the faster charge speed and you've got $500 you, you're willing to spend on the wall connector, then you can go with the wall connector uh, for that permanent look and feel, for that I don't have to worry about you know, forgetting to take the mobile charger with me on a road trip, so forth and so on. But it is totally up to you. Both will work great. And like I said, the vast majority of Tesla owners I know use the mobile connector in half for years and they're totally happy with it. So that's it. Uh, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button. And if you're buying a Tesla, don't forget to use my referral code so you get some free supercharger miles. And I'll get some free supercharger miles as well. So cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.